Hello guys, my name is Nikki, and today we're going to discuss a very controversial subject, the Telecom API and how we as application developers are using it. The Telecom API is a telephony framework made by Android, which manages calls, audio and video, and also manages GSM and voice over IP calls. But first, before we're going to run some tests later on. But first, we, let's look at what happens under the hood, um, thanks to this graph, to the graph we've made, which will show us exactly how we use it. So, when we want to perform something in Android, we have to notify Android about our intentions. What are our intentions? Our intentions are to press the dial button, for example, and to make a call. So when we want to create a call, we create an internal object. We ask Android to create a call, and Android replies and gives us an object called connection. And this object now has an interface. So there are some methods like set active, set disconnected, set on hold, etc. We call those methods when the user presses the appropriate buttons. Then Android knows our intentions and acts accordingly. Android notifies us also using this object because this object also has callbacks. And we proceed with the according actions depending on what Android commands us. So if Android tells us to put on hold, for example, because Android receives a new GSM call object from the SIM connection, then we need to obey and put on hold. We do not know why exactly we are commanded to be on hold. This is up to Android, but we just obey. Similarly, when a new device appears, like a headset, Android informs us that there is a new connected device. So now we can appreciate the Telecom API, because it is thanks to this API that we can receive the appropriate actions from Android when the user presses the button on the headset. The developer of the headset would have to read the Android documentation and implement what Android says. Then the headset actions can be sent to Android, who in turn converts those actions into commands for objects owned or created by the app. Try and imagine what happens if the Telecom API does not exist. Basically, each car you see, each watch you see, each headset would have to send a pattern of bytes. And then application developers like us would be expected to understand what those patterns are. It cannot work like this. So this is the beauty of the Telecom API because it unifies everything into one and the developers are forced, the developers of the manufacturers of devices are forced to abide by a telecom API standard. Now let's start some tests. First, we need to make sure that we have basic telecom API integration. By basic, I mean that when this test passes, it doesn't mean that the phone has full telecom API support because there are levels of support. But this is the first basic test. All you do, one ongoing call, one incoming call, you press hold and resume, and you drop the call. If that works, then we have basic telecom API support. Now let's go into the second test, which is a bit more advanced. This time we're gonna go into call management and we're gonna have two incoming calls. And when two incoming calls appear, we should hear a beep on the second call. Something about the beep. The beep is not a file that we put in the app. And this is a raw file which is played because we want to keep the app size under control. The beep is a frequency which is sent to Android and we, show, and we ask Android to play it. This is why on different devices, different beeps are, 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 are being played because the operating system is interpreting these frequencies in a different way. Now, le now let's, go and, uh, let's go back to the test. We will uh, tap the notification to answer the second call, and we can now toggle between uh, calls and lines. If you have correct audio on, in each test, two-way audio in each test, and uh, one call goes on hold, and the other one is active, and vice versa, that is the second level of good telecom API support. Now, the next test is to check how GSM and VoIP calls interact together. And again, different phones have different behavior. So, let's do a VoIP call, answer it, and proceed by making a GSM call. 
In this example, we see that the VoIP call is placed on hold when the GSM call is answered. Once the GSM call is dropped, the phone should automatically resume so the user does not need to press resume manually. So, some phones don't do this and expect the user to go and press resume manually. This is not a problem of the app. The app is coded to automatically resume itself once a GSM call is finished. And here I will talk about what is a pure Android. A pure Android OS is not the OS you might think you have on your phone. The pure Android OS is the Android OS found in a Google Pixel phone. Any other OS that is in any other phone is 99.9%, .9%, maybe 100%, just modified by the developers of the manufacturer. This is why we get so many different behaviors and so many different things happening in the app. It's not because of the code of the app, it's because different manufacturers want to touch inside the OS and add, for example, some Bixby button. Yeah, this is why things break. In an upcoming test, 3CX had to put its foot down because the app was unstable and this is why we have some user complaints as well. This test is when you have a GSM call which is active followed by a VoIP call. Here, the VoIP call, we decided that it is safer for us to send the call to the forwarding rules under the correct assumption that the user is busy, busy with the GSM call. This is the only way the app could gain stability. We know that some users do not like this, but we promise that when the manufacturers really support this part of the telecom API properly, and by the way, this is inevitable in the future because you're gonna see that the telecom API is gonna be used in all devices used that will connect to us. Yes, cars, watches, it's gonna be used everywhere. But we will definitely change this behavior and support it properly. So now for the final test, we are now in a position to pair a headset. So I have prepared the headset before and we're going to make an incoming call and press the answer button. So an incoming call is now on the way. Notification is up. The real telecom API happens like this when I press the button and the call is answered. Okay. The second support of Telecom API is when you are able to press the button and drop the call. And the call is dropped. Note that when the call is dropped, sometimes if the, if the phone remains active, it means that the Telecom API is not working properly. So all you're doing is just opening and closing the line. So the screen must come like this after. So this is the current state of how 3CX works with the Telecom API and how it interacts with, uh, with the manufacturers of the devices. So yeah, like this video, subscribe to our channel to receive more content like this, and write down in the comment section below what you think of this video, what you have learned, and maybe what you would like to see in the future. Uh, I hope you found this informative, and I thank you for watching.